Welcome back to the latest episode of Conference Chatter TV, where we pick every game in the Big 12 this college football season. My name's Eric Sorrentino. I'm the KUSports.com Big 12 blogger, and thanks for sticking with me for another week here. I'm here to reflect on week four in the Big 12, where a couple of interesting games went down. Let's see how I did with making predictions for those games. I was 7-1, and one, not bad, which will move my record on the year to 38-4, and four, picking at a 90.5% clip. Not too bad, although I'm still not feeling good about week four. And I'll tell you the reason for that right here. The one game that I missed was UCLA 34 and Texas 12. Now, I, I haven't been too bad in, in, in making picks. This is only the second year of me making picks here on Conference Chatter TV for Big 12 games, but I'm fairly confident in saying in my two years of picking games, this has to be my worst pick in the short history of Conference Chatter TV. And I'll be honest with that. I thought Texas was going to win this game pretty big. I thought, well, UCLA has a decent running game. That's the only thing that the Bruins can do on offense. And Texas is better than any team in the country in stopping the run. Well, I might have looked a little bit too much into those numbers because UCLA ran all over Texas. UCLA did whatever it wanted to do against Texas in Austin. And, uh, you know, I, this was this was shocking to me. This was shocking to me. Now, I, I didn't think Texas was going to be playing for a national title again like they were last year, but I certainly didn't think the Longhorns were going to lose and look awful on their home field against a UCLA team that, quite honestly, didn't look that good. I mean, they couldn't beat K-State uh, in Week 1 in Manhattan. They got shut out by Stanford 35-0. I, 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 what, ha what the heck happened here? This was... This was awful. I mean, UCLA, 264 rushing yards, three touchdowns. You know, they only had 27 yards passing. And I said before the game, before the, the week here and making my predictions that UCLA, you know, they didn't have a passing offense and they displayed why, 27 yards? They didn't have to pass, though. I mean, 264 rushing yards, uh, that, all sorts of problems that, that I saw for, for UT. And, and on defense, too, I mean, that's what was supposed to be Kind of the strength of, of the Horns this season was that impressive defense. I mean, they looked unbelievable against Texas Tech, but not here. And, and UT's offense, not much better. I mean, Garrett Gilbert, the 30 of 45, looked pretty good, but 5.9 yards per completion. I don't know if that'll really get it done. I mean, they don't really seem to be extending the field like they did when Colt McCoy was there. And, you know, you take a look at the running backs, you know, that. The Horns were supposed to run the ball more this year, and the running back by committee has been okay, but they've had like four to five guys that are trying to lock down spots during these games. They they have a steady influx of, of guys that are still trying to get carries. I mean, you saw DJ Monroe in this game. It's the first time I think I've seen him all year. They don't have a go-to receiver like they did for with Jordan Shipley last year, and th this, this wasn't good. This wasn't good. Five turnovers for Texas, four fumbles lost, an interception. And really what it seems now is just they have a slew of moderately decent college players. And that really, particularly on offense, I mean, that well above average on defense, but that's something on offense that we haven't really seen lately. You know, you had Vince Young, you had Jordan Shipley, you had Quan Cosby, you had Jamal Charles. These are all players that have come through recently that, that, that have been really, really good players. I mean, Texas has, I believe, more... Uh, they put more players in the NFL than any other college team uh, in terms of active players, but th there's something about this year that, that that's off, and that's why I didn't have them winning the South, quite honestly, this year. But I did have them finishing second. I thought they'd still be pretty darn good, but we'll see. There's still time, but it's going to be tough for Texas. The next two games, you take a look. They have Oklahoma in Dallas, then they go to Lincoln to take on the 4-0 Huskers. Uh, it's gonna, this is tough. This is going to be tough for UT, and that's that's why I thought they wouldn't win the South. They have all these tough games at the beginning. This is one that I thought that would not be a problem, though. And UCLA just just dominated them. They they, they dominated them, and and I thought uh, you know Texas was going to dominate UCLA. Um, I was off on that, but I was on on the rest of the game. So let's go. 
to a little bit of those where I picked the rest of the games right in the Big 12. Uh, seven more games that I picked right, starting with Oklahoma 31, Cincinnati 29. You know, o Oklahoma, y you never... Uh, it's never bad when you r win a road game, certainly. And they had some positives. You know, Landry Jones looked really good. Ryan Broyles, again, looked really good. The defense forced four turnovers on the road. That's pretty solid. But the Sooners also had their share of negatives. Uh, too many penalties, for one. 13 penalties for 113 yards. That won't get it done. The defense is inconsistent. I mean, they're giving up five yards per rush against Cincinnati. And, you know, overall, they're just playing in a ton of close games. They've won four games. They are 4-0, and I'll give Bob Stoops credit for that. But three of their four wins this year have been one-possession games. Now, can, can, can they really go undefeated with all of these close games? I, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's any team in the Big 12 right now that looks like they're going to play for a BCS title. I, I, I just would have to say that, that nobody looks like they're... Uh, ready to play for a BCS title this season. Uh, things could change, certainly, but I, I don't know. I mean, OU still is is a little concerning to me, despite the fact that they're 4-0. You take a look at the Sooners' upcoming schedule or, you know, the, t the, the teams that they have to play. Uh, certainly, Texas coming up is, is no guarantee. It never is. Um, they should be favored to win that game, but I don't know if OU can go undefeated. You know, they, they still have to go to Missouri. They have to go to Texas A&M. They have to go to Oklahoma State this season. And I think the only way they're going to play for a BCS title is, is if they go undefeated. Um, it's, it's, you know, looking right now, Alabama and Ohio State 1-2. and two, They're going to have to to lose to create room for some other teams. But I don't know if OU can do it. And... Uh, I, they, they look good, though. I mean, it's it's just tough that they didn't look dominating. I mean, there's no Big 12 team right now that looks dominating. And that leads me to the next game that I picked correct, Nebraska 17, South Dakota State 3. I mean, again, just a very baffling result. I, I mean, 17 points against South Dakota State. I mean, you take a look at Delaware, which beat South Dakota State 26-3 to at home in the first game of the season. I mean... Nebraska with only three points after halftime. I mean, th this was not what I expected. Taylor Martinez, the redshirt freshman, while he's been dynamite this season, he didn't look that good this game. He fumbled the first snap. He threw two interceptions. He was flagged for taunting. And he just wasn't on target with his throws. I mean, he was just 6 for 14 against a rather mediocre, lower-level South Dakota State squad. So, again, I, I don't really know what to make of, of the Big 12 at this point. Kind of sounds like I'm going on a, a giant rant here, but the fact of the matter is that the, these three teams that I just went over, Texas, Oklahoma, and Nebraska, are certainly the three best teams in the Big 12, but I don't see any Big 12 representing in the BCS title game like has been the case these past few years. And you take a look at Nebraska. Can they make a title run? You know, they have a freshman quarterback, and they'll look great at weeks, I think, but then they'll have other weeks like this where it's just the natural progression of freshman quarterbacks being inconsistent. I mean, it's it's just how it is. And Nebraska coming up, at you know, they have a bye next week, but then they go to K-State, then they're uh, home to Texas, then they go to Oklahoma State, then they're home to Missouri. Very tough stretch for Nebraska, which, again, to make the BCS title, you're probably going to have to go undefeated in the Big 12 this year. So we'll see how that goes. But the uh, rest of the games we'll go over quickly here that I pick correct. K-State 17, UCF 13. I thought that would be a close game, but Carson Kaufman stepping up in the end. you got to give him credit for that, giving the Wildcats the victory. Missouri 51, Miami of Ohio 13. Tigers uh, with no scare this week like they did against uh, San Diego State. Iowa State 27, Northern Iowa 0. Kansas 42, New Mexico State 16. And Baylor 30, Rice 13. So, you know, 7-1, and one, not a bad week. I'm still kind of looking for that undefeated week here, but 38-4 and four on the year is not too shabby. I'll look to improve upon that next week and offer more of my predictions for the games in Week 5. So that'll do it for this week, guys. Thank you for checking out the latest edition of Conference Chatter TV. My name is Eric Sorrentino. I am out, and I'll talk to you again next week. Thanks.